you are walking this path in person, you should be standing at the corner of Lakeshore Boulevard and 20th Street. You are on the south side of Lakeshore Boulevard, facing the pathway that leads down into the parking lot behind Humber College's A building. Just to the left of your path is the Lakeshore Lodge. Please travel where it is safe and be aware of your surroundings throughout this experience. My name is Miranda, and for the next 20 minutes, I will be your guide. As we move together through this experience, I will narrate your path, indicating where to go, when to stop, and helping you to visualize the area as it was in 1969. You will walk this path as Marie, a fictional student attending Lakeshore Teachers College at this time. All of the names of teachers and students in this experience have been fictionalized. You will hear another voice, which is that of Marie's internal thoughts. Throughout the experience, I will be describing what Marie sees, hears, and various actions she takes, such as checking the time on her watch. I encourage you to follow along with these directions to further embody the experience, but please be mindful of others around you as you do. Let us now step back in time together. Imagine it is 1969 and you are in the second term of your year-long program at the Lakeshore Teachers College. You look down at a piece of paper in your hand, which outlines your classes for the day. The next voice you will hear is Marie's internal thoughts. Okay. So, school management, methods and art, children's lit. Ugh, do we really have to end the day with methods and science? I'm going to fall asleep learning about that so late in the day. Well, I guess I should get going if I'm going to make it to class on time. Begin heading down the driveway in a southward direction through what is now Humber College's loading dock parking lot. If you arrive at the cement barriers and chain that separate this area from the main Humber parking lot before I say we are there, please pause in a safe spot. As you begin to travel, to your right is the current residence building for Humber College's Lakeshore campus. In your mind's eye, replace that building with open space in front of the Lakeshore Teachers College. As you walk, you pass teachers and fellow students walking to class. You recognize a female student from your school management class walking by. Oh, what is her name? Julie? Christine? She turns to look at you. Should you wave at her or just smile? She makes eye contact with you and you have to decide. She waves at you before continuing on her way. Oh, now I remember. Her name is Jenny. To your left, imagine you can see vast farmland, apple trees, and just beyond the trees are cottages. These all belonged to the Lakeshore Psychiatric Hospital that was in operation at this time. As you get to the end of the current residence building, you should be able to see Humber's current A building to your right, which was the original Lakeshore Teachers College building. It stands two stories tall and is composed of light brown brick and glass windows. When it was first constructed, the building was considered an architectural marvel for its innovative use of materials such as glass and steel in its construction, which was quite a change from previous architectural styles. It was a direct rejection of the 19th century style used in other buildings in the area, such as the hospital buildings which stand not too far to the east of here. You see your children's literature teacher, Ms. Cross, as you walk. Ah! I forgot to finish reading those Anderson stories for Mrs. Cross's class. I'll have to sit at the back today and hope she doesn't call on me. At this point, you should be standing on the edge of Humber's parking lot. Directly to your right is the original Lakeshore Teachers College building. Pause for a moment and listen. You are right next to the gymnasium, which is still in use today. Imagine there are students inside. What sport are they doing right now? 
Oh, I wish I could be in there right now, feeling the light weight of the foil in my hand, flicking my wrist and hearing the clink as it connects with the weapon of my opponent. Getting to practice fencing is the best part of the day. Enter the parking lot and turn right so that you are walking along the edge on your way to the main current entrance to this side of the building. If you get to the main entrance before I do, wait up for me. You are walking by the original kitchen. Imagine a combination of smells hits you at once. Freshly baked tea biscuits, onions. What could be on the menu for today? At this point, you should be standing at the main entrance on this side of the building. Finally, you get a whiff of chicken and you know what must be on the menu. Ooh, chicken a la king for lunch today. What a treat. Imagine you can see kitchen staff through the window, chopping vegetables, mixing food in large pots, and talking to one another. Continue heading south through the parking lot until you get to the southeast corner of the building. Please be mindful of your surroundings and don't move on from this spot without me. On a day that the cafeteria served chicken a la king, they may have also offered options such as onion soup, steak pie, a side of mashed potatoes, green beans or coleslaw, fruit salad, and assorted sandwiches and desserts for students to purchase. What do you think you'd order for lunch today? The part of the building you are passing here on your right was not built during the time the teacher's college was in operation. In front of your path, you can see cars driving around, trying to find a good spot. Students and teachers hurrying across the parking lot and around the building to get to class. Is this the past or the present? Turns out in 1969, this space in front of you was also a parking lot so it wouldn't have looked all that different from Humber College's operations today. By this point, you should be standing at the corner of the building. Turn right and head west along the edge of the parking lot until you meet up with a sidewalk that leads into a nook between parts of the building. Follow the sidewalk until you are looking into a small green area. If you get there before I do, please don't move on without me. I don't want to miss this part. The Lakeshore Teachers College was in operation between 1959 and 1975. Students at the college were trained through either a one or two year stream. While at the college, they learned traditional subjects such as school management, methods and histories of teaching, educational psychology, children's literature, math, science, art, and music. Students also took part in extracurricular activities, not unlike those we might see in today's schools. Drama clubs, sports teams, and student councils were all active throughout the school's history. Some sports would have been played outdoors, and we are on our way to one spot where they would have been played. It was a simple, paved square courtyard. Replace in your mind's eye the green space you are moving towards with an image of this courtyard. Imagine you can see some students standing there, tossing a ball around before class. At this point, you should be stopped somewhere along the path where you have a good view of this open, grassy area between the buildings. You see the ball being passed from one student to the next, and then suddenly it gets thrown in your direction. It lands right at your feet as the other students gesture for you to throw it back. Don't overthrow it, don't overthrow it, don't overthrow it. You nervously raise the ball, ready to throw. You take a deep breath as you raise it above your head and quickly swing your arms forward, releasing the ball. It soars through the air and you hold your breath, watching its trajectory. Oh no, I've thrown it way too hard. It's definitely going to go too far. You start to turn away, embarrassed, but then you hear the ball land in someone's hands. You nod at the students, feeling pretty proud of yourself for that perfect throw. 
double back down the path you walked initially, heading back towards the parking lot. You have an extra spring in your step as you walk, just thinking about that perfect throw. You sneak a glance behind you, taking one last look at the students playing in the courtyard. Maybe if they're out here tomorrow morning, I'll ask to join in. Though, I can't imagine it would be more fun than fencing. Looking south across this parking lot is the RL Water Treatment Plant, another site that has remained from the days of the Teachers College, having been constructed on November 22, 1968. At this point, you should be back in the parking lot beside the carpool parking spots. Move through the parking lot towards the street on the west side of the building. You should be traveling towards the parking gates at the entrance to the parking lot and should see the carpool and reserved parking spots on your right hand side. Keep an eye out for cars as you walk. The Lakeshore Teachers College was designed to emulate the new school design that these teacher students were expected to be heading into upon graduating. There were separate rooms for each subject and the overall look resembled what we might recognize today as a public school. Though these students were being trained for teaching in this type of school, the transition to the new public school system was slow, meaning early graduates were teaching in one-room schoolhouses for a few years after leaving the college. The question of how to best train teachers was definitely on the mind of the province between the 19th and 20th centuries. 1850 was the first time teachers had to meet certain qualifications in order to be employed, but these requirements were rather limited. Essentially, if you could read, write, and had a basic grasp of the essential subjects, congratulations, you could be a teacher. As you can imagine, those very limited requirements allowed for the hiring of teachers not yet ready for their role. Ontario used county model schools to train teachers through the 1800s until 1907, eventually giving way to the implementation of what were at first called normal schools. This term was used to describe teacher training institutions until the 1950s when the term teacher's college gained popularity. As you will learn later, teacher's colleges would eventually be scrutinized and changed significantly to address these concerns. The part of the building you are passing here on your right would have been science classrooms. What are we learning about today in methods of science? Oh right, we're still on the scientific method. I suppose it's important, but my goodness, is it ever dull. It doesn't help that Mr. Jameson has the least engaging voice I think I've ever heard. At this point, you should be on the sidewalk at 23rd Street, just beyond the parking gates, facing north. Begin walking north up 23rd Street until you get to the spot where 23rd Street splits into a parking lot on the left fork and curves to the intersection on the right fork. To your left, you see residential homes, quite similar to the view in 1969. Imagine you can see a woman at the edge of her driveway. Decked out in her house coat with her hair pulled into curlers, she grabs the newspaper. A neighbor walking past waves to her. As you head along this portion of the college, to your right, you are passing by what were the industrial arts, mathematics, and staff rooms. Today, we are going to be talking about the best ways to teach mixed media to your future elementary students. Mixed media? I've never heard of that kind of art before, but it sounds exciting. I'm sure Miss Sanderson will have a great lesson planned for us. Should I write different types of mixed media on the board before we start, or have them brainstorm? I suppose I'll let them brainstorm with you. Okay, so, today we are going to be talking about the best ways to teach mixed media to your future elementary students. Who can name an example of mixed media art? Yes, that should work. I'll take a few answers, then ask, what are some examples of projects you could do with elementary students to teach them? You are currently heading towards what was the original entrance to the Lakeshore Teachers College. As we are getting close to the start of classes, imagine you can see people passing you, some hurrying to get to the door, others talking with each other as they walk. 
pause when you get to the fork in the road. Position yourself so you can see the entrance to the building on your right. The entrance to the college building you see to your right was the original entrance to the Lakeshore Teachers College. You look down at the watch on your wrist. Oh good, I've got a few minutes before the bell rings. Continue moving along the sidewalk north until you get to the edge of the building that connects with the new addition. As you move, you are passing the part of the building where there was a home economics class. Can you also hear the music society practicing in the room next door? I'm so glad I have time to listen to a few minutes of band practice before I have to head inside. Their concert is in a few weeks, so they should be getting rather good. Extracurricular activities were a core component of the offerings at the Lakeshore Teachers College, as they were trying to create a similar environment to what these teacher students would be entering upon leaving the college. Sporting groups, such as volleyball and basketball teams, were available, as well as artistic groups, such as a drama club and music society, which put on concerts. Pause when you get to the edge of the original building, beside the sign that says, Campus Store, Service and Delivery Vehicles Only. Music classes would have been held in rooms in this section of the building, as they are today for Humber students. You pause here and let the music wash over you. You start to sway back and forth, letting all thoughts of the day fade away. I guess that's it for this morning. At this point, Marie would be beginning her day inside. We will be making another jump in time now, though much smaller than we did earlier to get to 1969. We are moving forwards to the end of the school day. Imagine you have just gone through a long day of learning about the history of teaching, how to properly organize and manage school operations, and various theories on how to teach. You begin the walk home, heading north along 22nd Street until you get to Lakeshore Boulevard West. I can't believe Miss Cross called on me. It's like she could sense I didn't do the readings. I'll have to finish them tonight in case we have a quiz on them tomorrow. You walk as one of many students exiting the school on your way home. You see one of the students who was playing in the courtyard this morning passing you and you wave goodbye, making a mental note to arrive earlier tomorrow so you can try to join the students playing in the courtyard. When you get to Lakeshore Boulevard West, turn right and begin walking back towards our starting point. You are walking past Humber College's current residence building, but in 1969, it had not been built yet. Instead, imagine you are walking directly along the northern edge of the Teachers College, with a large manicured lawn laid out in front of you. At this corner of the school, you are passing the auditorium, which is still in use today. Imagine you can hear the drama club setting up for a rehearsal. I heard they're doing Our Town this term. I hope Johnny plays the stage manager in this production. He was so good as Prospero last term. Students like Marie would have walked this path and the halls of the Lakeshore Teachers College between 1959 and 1975. After a ministerial committee evaluated teachers colleges in the late 60s, it was decided that teachers were coming out of schools not yet ready for their role, having only received one to two years of education. It was determined by the province that more years of training were required to adequately prepare new teachers. As a result, the teachers' college system as a whole across Ontario was incorporated into universities, becoming departments of education. The Lakeshore Teachers College students and faculty were moved to York University between 1971 and the closure of the college in 1975. But the building did not stay empty for long, with Humber College picking up the Lakeshore Teachers College building in that same year. I should probably get those fairy tales finished tonight. 
Then I have that worksheet for Miss Duval's class, and a paper for Mr. Johnson's class. I think I'm in for a long night of homework. As we near the starting point of our journey, I invite you to begin to bring yourself back to the present year. Remember that you are listening or watching this through technology that Marie never could have imagined existing. Thank you for joining me in this journey through time. I hope you had fun on the trip. If you enjoyed this experience, you can explore more of the Lakeshore Grounds Interpretive Center's offerings, including additional guided journeys through time, at our website, lakeshoregrounds.ca. Narration for this experience has been provided by Miranda Tippins, and the voice of Marie has been provided by Tiana Crawl. You should now be back at the spot where we began our journey today, and this officially ends our experience. Thank you for participating.